Islam is nothing but khair. And Mu'min, Muslim, the true believer, he is a symbol of khair, symbol of peace, symbol that everybody around him feels safe and secure. You know, our human body is made up of almost 50 to 70 trillion cells. And each cell has an energy of 1.7 volt. And every action we do in this dunya, it converts into a nur or zul. Quran has used two terms. One is khasara and zulm. For the people who do sins, they go against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Quran has used the word nur for the people because the currency of the day of judgment will not be the currency of this dunya. Currency of that dunya, of that life will be nur. Nuruhum yasa bayna aidihim wa bi aymanihim yakuluna rabbana atmim lana nurana waqfir lana inna ka ala kulli shayin qadir. Then the believers, when they will find nur on that day, on them and on their right side, they will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbul Alameen, Rabbana atmim lana nurana waqfir lana. That complete our nur. So whatever actions we do in this life, it converts into a nur. That's why in one of the hadith, Prophet says that to remove the darkness of grave, connect yourself for the prayers people go when there is no sunlight. Means Maghrib and Fajr and Isha. These two terms, Khasara and Zul, that will be focus of my khutbah, inshallah, today. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the terminology that you and me, we can understand. Allah says that there is a trade between you and me. Trade between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his abd. When Allah says, Inna Allah ashsara minal mu'mineena anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. That Allah has purchased, you have sold yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your nafs, your soul, your body, and your mal. And Allah in return has promised that He will grant you Jannah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Saf, when He says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. O believer, do you want me to tell you about a tijara, about a trade which will be a key for the Jannah and Maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is all about trade. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever bounties He has given you and me, our body, our intellect, our mal, our time, our energy, all this is asset. And now it depends on me how I want to use this asset. The trade I have done with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah says, Wal asr inna insana lafi khusr. Everybody who has done trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody who has come in this dunya, they are among khasirin. They are in khusr, they are in great loss, except illa lazina amanu wa amilus salihat. Now it's up to me that whatever Allah has given me, how I want to utilize it so that I will be successful on that day or I will fail. You know, I was reading one hadith in which Prophet Sallallahu says that on that day, if there was an animal in this dunya with horn, he has caused any harm to the one who did not have horn. On that day, that animal will pay back to the animal that he or she has harmed. Have you ever paid attention to this hadith? For animals, there is no day of judgment. For animals, there is no Jannah and Jahannam. Why did Prophet mention in this hadith about animals? The reason is 
that zulm, the definition of zulm is that if you transgress the boundaries about the haq of anybody, the right of anybody, if you don't fulfill your responsibility towards the haq of somebody, right of somebody, either you take away the right and haq or you don't fulfill the responsibility towards it. So that day Allah is going to bring these animals just to pay back and then they will vanish. Imagine if Allah is going to bring animals on that day to pay back, let alone the human being. That is what we need to focus today. That how I behave with my wife, how I behave with my kids, how I behave. In Urdu, we say that in this world, we are the most people in Masti. And we are like under the influence of this dunya and we are so busy in this dunya, we don't even care right and left. And I violate the right of people right and left. And I don't even care. That day, brothers, every word we utter from our tongue, it's saved in the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every action we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has witnesses that what we do. That's why whenever there is a husne ma'ashrat, that how we live our life, how we behave with people, husne ma'ashrat is the most beautiful thing about Islam. And whenever Allah in Quran has talked about husne ma'ashrat, He has always reminded us, Ittaqullah, Ittaqullah, that Allah is watching over you. Allah is watching over you. Allah is the witness how you do what you do with people around you. I was reading another hadith in which Prophet Sallallahu says that the biggest fitna I am leaving behind you after me will be the woman, aurat, will be the biggest fitna. And many times the explanation comes in our mind, fitna in regards to going away from decency or faisha or going away from the boundaries that set by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi about segregation and dealing with women. These are the first things comes in our mind with this hadith. But there is a, another dimension of this hadith. And one of the Shaykh says that the, one of the meaning of this hadith is that I am afraid that you will fail to fulfill the rights of the woman. Rights of the woman as a mother. Rights of a woman as a wife. Rights of a woman as a daughter. And rights of a woman as a sister, my brothers and my sisters. So this is another interpretation of this hadith that Prophet ﷺ is warning us that I am afraid, I am afraid that you will not be able to fulfill your responsibility and that will be counted against you as a zulm and then you will be accountable on that day in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to the, the rights of people, the biggest right that we see on us is of our parents and that will be, I'm going to spend few minutes about the rights of parents. There was one Sahabi came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is loved by Allah the most? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, praying on time. And what is next, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said, obedience and serving the parents. And the Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, and after that, he says, Jihad fi sabillah. See the sequence. Praying on time, the second comes before jihad. And this sequence, in many hadiths you will see the sequence changes with circumstances. Sequence changes with the person who is asking the question. If the person asking the question, he is the person who prays always on time, for him Prophet ﷺ will give him a different answer. So this was one of the quality of the Prophet ﷺ that he knew his Sahaba. You know, there is a hadith in which Prophet ﷺ says that if you go and look at your parent with love, one glance of your eyes on your parents gives you reward of one Hajj and one Umrah. Have you paid attention? Why? Why this much reward for just glancing, you know, on your parents' face? The reason is, brother, then sisters, 
Wallahi, there is no relationship. There is no relationship in our relationship which is so selfless. They have no need. They are not putting any you know, strings with this relationship between parent and child. It's such a devoted relationship without any strings, without any selfishness, without any expectation from a child. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such a high reward for the people that who take care of their parents. There was a hadith in which Prophet says that there will be a time slave girl will give birth to her master. We have heard this hadith many times. You know, some of the people, they do the interpretation of this hadith. The time will come that the son and daughter, they will behave and act with their parents like they are the master of their parents. Look at the interpretation of this hadith. The slave girl will give birth to her master. That the children will act like they are the master of their parents. You know, there was one caption I was reading on social media. One mother says, My child, when you first spoke, the first word you spoke, that was, that had given me such a joy that I was jumping up and down. Tears were coming from my eyes. And I was feeling so joyful and happy at that occasion when you spoke the first word of your life. But my son, when now you come around me and you speak, I get scared. My heart feels drowned. I feel sad. I feel like I'm a dead person. Same mother is saying these words, my brothers and my sisters, to the time and age we live in today, Wallahi, today, as a parent, we have to think 10 times before we say anything to our children, because we don't know what will be the reaction of a child. And this is the interpretation of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that slave girl will give birth to her master. Allah, Allah.